Greetings from Ukraine, I'm Alex and welcome back to our channel. Today we have one more episode of our series Computers of Chernobyl. It's a series where we explore and study the history of using of computers and the data processing in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Our today's hero is a really unusual device. This is a Soviet SM-5211 cassette streamer for the SM-AVM mainframes. These mainframes generally were the architectural clones of famous DEC PDP-11. And I have to say that they were a pretty important part of the Chernobyl IT history in both pre- and post-disaster periods, because they were used in any kind of the tasks you could only imagine, starting from processing of the research and scientific data, or managing the dosimetry system of the nuclear power plant, and up to the controlling the so-called integrated monitoring system of sarcophagus, the isolation structure that was built over the infamous Unit 4. Up to the present day, it is possible to find remains of SM mainframes, as well as their peripherals scattered across the zone, for example in Pripyat you can find them at Jupiter plant. And uh, thanks to our friend Electron Master from Odessa, we could find a part of such a mainframe, which we are going to bring to our laboratory, so here will be a few interesting long episodes in the future. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to turn all the notifications on, so you won't miss it. For those who want a longer version of this episode, join us on our Patreon, where you can find virtually unknown data about Chernobyl that we translate to English, and also full versions of our videos. And now, let's go. The streamers were produced here in Ukraine, specifically in the city of Odessa, by a division of Kiev Electron Mash Factory. This factory is pretty famous, for example, for its Poisk computers. So, this device was designed as an external storage for SM machines, however, not only it had some more features. Contrary to more widespread tape reel drives, this streamer uses small compact cassettes. Well, I have only this one, so I'm going to use it for demonstrations. By the way, this is empty one, but if inscriptions give you some hint of what was that software here initially, please write me in the comments. So, here are two tape drives, which allow to write data by the ISO 340783 standard, with the density of 30 bits, information per one millimeter of the tape, so a total capacity of each cassette would be 560 kilobytes. Well, pretty not bad. So, as small and lightweight the cassettes used here are, as huge and heavy the streamer is. It is 30 kilograms heavy and has a standard form factor of SM peripherals, a larger version, let's say. This particular device has been made in a tabletop version, because they also could be in a rack mount version. So, this one on the sides has these large covers, and the top part is closed with the lid you can pretty easily open. On the back, we have a stack of socket boards, which we'll surely review a little bit later, then a stack of power management electronics and a large cooling fan. All of this had to be covered with a back panel, but unfortunately, for this very device, we do not have it. Well, I suppose you watched our recent episode about the Robotron SM9010 computer, and, you know, disassembling of that machine gave me a real moral trauma. So, this thing is a, as we say, diametral different, because here design is really good. You can access everything very simple, you can remove everything very straightforward, place it back, and apart from uh, only one thing that uh, power switch is surprisingly located on the back, everything is simply amazing. So, let's open and take a look. So, the top lid from one side is holding on hooks, and on another side it's fixated with two screws, so it's really easy to open. And this is what we have inside. The first thing we see is the crate, and I believe uh, for those who watch us regularly, this crate, you know, will look pretty familiar. In the middle there is something that looks like a common data and a power bus. Then we have these two tape drives, which are well packed with electronics. 
they are connected with the bus using these blue connectors. Uh, also, here we have few ribbon cables and one of them goes to the crate and another one to the front panel, which has behind a little socket board. There is some free space here, so all cables are very easily accessible, so do all the screws, you really do not need to think how to access that or another part, everything is very, very straightforward. Okay, now let's remove the side panels, uh, they are actually holding on two screws on the bottom, uh, together with the legs on which it's standing, uh, that I already removed, and also two on the top. So this exposed that large fan of the power supply. And here is interesting thing, because technically we just turned the device to the rack mount version. The front panel is exactly 19 inches, and on each side there are handles to pull it out from the rack as needed. So the space freed by removing the panels is perfect for mounting the standard SM railings. So I believe when the time will come for reassembling the actual SM rack, this device will pretty happily live inside it. And for now, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so you won't miss the new episodes. Now, let's take a look to the front panel. The streamer can work in autonomous mode, but obviously the most you can get when it is remotely controlled. So here are just a few controls on this panel. There is a button and an LED for a drive select, a power on LED and two LEDs that will flash if during the power up the device detected an error or malfunction of some of its components uh, because it makes a self test. And on the tape drives there are write protection and eject buttons with corresponding LEDs as well. Well, as here we deal with kind of socialistic design, the tape drives open and close pretty similar to the doors of Lada. By the way, quite many native English speakers asked me before uh, how the design can be socialistic. You know, pretty easily, because this is such a term we use in a uh, countries that used to be a part of a socialistic bloc or a Soviet Union. Basically, the thing is that many devices and consumer goods made in the Soviet Union could be sometimes good, but the overall design was somehow uh, given a feeling that uh, they were byproduct of the military first industry. Uh, either the user interfaces were crude or the design was not super friendly or the documentation was over formalized like it would be for some uh, really something super complex when even it coming for the very consumer stuff. Well, uh, documentation for this kind of device is also not an exception, just look at this beauty, yeah? Uh, by the way, I want to remind you that a lot of documentation for the computers we review and other equipment you can find on our Patreon, so link is in the description, you should check it. Okay, so now let's look to the crate. If you watched our previous episode about the modem, you will find it pretty familiar. Here are five socket boards, all of them are pretty low integrated, because their designers had to fit the crate into the form factor. But again, here we can see a pretty high quality of production, because the boards are completely covered with varnish, well assembled and so on. Each board has two SNP type connectors, and well, by the way, I never have seen a transparent version of them. The streamer is based on the onboard microcontroller with a Soviet clone of 8088 processor. For example, this one is the ROM board of it. It has four reprogrammable ROM chips with a total capacity of 16 kilobytes. The trouble is, however, that this version of a streamer is earlier and therefore rarer, so it is not so good documented. And there was a later modification with a different layout of the drives and slightly different boards. But at any case, there had to be three brain boards, one crate controller board and one interface board. This is the brain unit. The biggest chip is KR580 ik 80 a which is a Soviet clone for Intel 8088. This chip here is an uh, obsolete version, because it's more widely known as KR580 VM80A, which is a popular one for both home and industrial computers produced back then in the Soviet Union. 
This one is the interface board. They also could be different. This particular streamer has a subversion .09, which means it has to be used together with the VTA2000 terminal and the board provides ISFF interface. These terminals have been designed and produced also here in Ukraine to replace more expensive imported Polish and Hungarian ones from Mera and Videoton. Well, we will have an episode about such terminal as well, so do not forget to subscribe and turn on all the notifications. The now empty crate looks pretty the same as the one of a modem we talked in a previous episode, with only one difference, because it has a fully populated backplane with connectors and a greater number of the boards installed. The crate is connected to the bus with a couple of ribbon cables that end with such a connector similar to those on the boards, but it has a super convenient look. There are two buttons on the sides to release it, and when you place it back, it gets positioned firmly. And there is also this connector that provides a cooling fan with the power. So, what's next? We are going to play with this thing around, uh, try to find the documentation for its boards and uh, maybe even we'll try to connect to actual SAM equipment. So, it's gonna be pretty interesting and for sure we are going to share it with you. So, for now, like this video and subscribe to our channel, because otherwise you'll miss that. And for those who want much more, especially a longer version of this episode, join us on our Patreon page where you can find many interesting things about Chernobyl, documentation and various archival data. So that's it for today, I hope you like it and see you next time.